Without a solid data modeling approach, a lot of data architectures fall apart. And in a previous video, I broke down five of the most common data modeling strategies you'll see in a modern stack. And we reviewed all of them from a pretty high level with just some generic graphs. But what I wanna to do today is dive a little bit deeper into three of the examples, which include normalized modeling, using a star schema, and then data vault. And what we're going to do is compare those three by looking at some example model layouts. And it's not gonna be in a database, I'm not going to be creating it on the screen, but I just did some simple Google searches and found a few images that I think could be helpful. So it's really nothing crazy, but my hope is by digging a little bit further and given this level of example, it might help get the point across a little better Better and clear up any gaps that you may be having after watching the other video. Now, all this falls under the category of modern data engineering in the modern data stack. So if you're somebody who's new to data engineering, or you just want to get a better understanding of what all this includes, I have put together a free guide. I call it the starter guide for the modern stack. It's going to give you a layout of a typical data pipeline, show some of the example components within it, and then list out a bunch of example tools to help you with your learning. So with that said, let's now jump into the video comparing these different modeling approaches. Here's number one. This is an example of normalized. So when we say normalize that Inman approach. You can see there are a bunch of different tables and they are kind of sprawling out from each other. So you have a separate order table and an order item table. These are completely separate. You have a separate manufacturer broken out from the package, the drug item and drug. The main point here is that everything is broken out individually. And this makes sense when you're building an application, but can also be true for data modeling. And this is basically what you're gonna do in an Inman approach when you're just copying this format into your central warehouse, as opposed to keeping it in an application. So hopefully that makes sense. And I think it will make even more sense when you see it compared to this, which is that idea of the Kimball or denormalized approach. So as we mentioned before, you have your centralized fact table. In this case, it's around the idea of sales that connects outwardly to all of these different dimensions with descriptions. So you have your foreign keys to each of these tables and you have dollars sold. And the big difference here is each of these are flattened tables. So they don't have, for example, here order broken out into pharmacist, into client unit. You know, this would just be one flattened dim order table that already has these joins built in into something over here. So they don't have an order, but imagine, you know, instead of product, this was an order dimension. It would be descriptions about the order flattened out already. And all of those joins behind the scenes would already be handled for you in this type of approach. And this fact table is based around some sort of business process, some business activity, as opposed to here, it's based around the actual source data itself. It's not based on the business concept. And lastly, we have a data vault. This isn't showing example tables, but hopefully this will also help kind of drive home what this design looks like. So here we have three different hubs. We have customer, product, and order. Those are the hubs, the core business concept. Then you have satellites, which are adding descriptors around customers. So it's almost like dimensions in the fact and dimension world. But the big difference here is you have now link tables, which are linking together these concepts. And this could also have a satellite to the link table because it's adding descriptions on the relationship. So a link again is really more about relationships between these concepts and associations. And you could have different associations over time that change and that log of history and all that stuff would be tracked in this link table. You know, you join different versions of customer to different versions of the product. When did those versions match? Well, you could look in the link table. And here, as it says, it's recording a history of the interaction, you know, the different versions of everything. This is why this is a really helpful approach when you have a lot of auditing and historical tracking that you want to be able to do. This is designed with that in mind, but different from the dimensional modeling, which is also different from the normalized modeling. Hopefully now you have a little bit better understanding of the differences between these three approaches of normalized star schema and data vault. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.